Okay, well, uh, I guess we should uh, get underway, Bill. And uh, I know uh, I'm, I'm up here in Orangeville and uh, I, I certainly got some snow and I know they got some snow in Toronto. Not sure everybody, what everybody else that's in the webinar today, but hopefully that it goes away soon. So welcome everyone. Thanks for attending our webinar today. And uh, with so many options out there for phone systems, we, we wanted to inform people on the different types and provide you with uh, you know, all the information you need so you can make a very informative decision uh, if you're in the marketplace for a new phone system, that is. And uh, for, for today, any questions that you have during the webinar, please put them in the chat window and uh, we'll do our best to answer them as we go along. However, uh, we will have a Q&A uh, chat session at the end and uh, everyone will receive a, uh, a follow-up uh, email as well. Uh, and uh, that'll include some, some resources and links in there for you. So just moving on. So myself, uh, Bob Hornablow, and business development at BSC, over 30 years of experience providing uh, solutions to clients. And with us uh, presenting today, we have Bill Bovenu, president and owner of BSC, uh, since uh, BSC Solutions Group since 1984 over 30 years of uh, providing managed IT services to organizations ac across the GTA. And we are a Microsoft Silver partner and, and have been since 1999. So just moving on. Uh, so today, uh, the agenda, we're gonna be uh, going through the uh, types of phone systems uh, in use today, pros and cons of each type, uh, the best breed phone system, and Bill's going to do a brief a brief demonstration of the, a new phone system and a Teams phone system. And then, of course, at the end there, we're going to have our Q&A session. Um, you know, different types of phone systems, there's basically three different types of phone systems out there. You have your, your standard uh, PBX system with all the equipment, which is on premises, uh, analog, digital, or IP phones, and uh, analog or digital phone lines. And I guess we call that your uh, typical legacy system. And then you have your cloud uh, hosted system with only IP phones on site and SIP phone trunks. And then of course the third being the hybrid system which kind of combines both partially hosted, partially on premises and SIP phone trunks. So at this point, I'm going to um, pass it over to Bill and he's gonna kind of go through the different systems with you and do the, and perform the demo. Well, Take it away, Bill. All right. So um, first I'll talk about uh, traditional on-premise systems. I think everybody's uh, used one of these. Um, certainly here in Ontario, uh, Nortel is, uh, is the most you know, uh, well-known brand. Uh, other brands, you know, Mitel, Toshiba, NEC, Panasonic, Samsung, there's, there's many sharp, lots of, uh, lots of brands that, uh, that have uh, manufactured PBX equipment to put on-premise. Uh, you know, typically the way uh, these systems work is you've got your your physical phone system is, uh, is located in, a, in an office or warehouse. Uh, you've got your lines supplied from the local phone company, uh, traditionally Bell Canada, nowadays it can be, can be others. Uh, and that connects you to what's called the public switched telephone network. <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the benefits of, uh, of a uh, on-premise uh, traditional PBX, of course, is that the call quality is, is very reliable and, and high quality. Uh, and then the, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're typically durable and long lasting. I mean, we see that there are still um, many, many Nortel phone systems that are in use today across uh, GTA. And of course, Nortel went out of business 20 years ago. So, so uh, they made a good product. It's, it's a shame. <clears throat> so uh, not, some of the uh, not so good benefits is of course, uh, you know, the, the cost to replace a phone system can be, can be expensive. Uh, typically, you need to uh, have a, uh, a telephone interconnect company that would, you know, make moves and changes for you. Uh, and uh, again, often that has a cost associated with it. You have to wait for them. Uh, voicemail in the old days was not included. Some of the systems then later did introduce voicemail, but many of them still don't have the ability to send out email notifications. So, so that's a challenge today with uh, with uh, with everybody, you know, with, with their stay-at-home work orders. Uh, you know, not being able to uh, to to quickly get voicemail notifications or, or answer those calls to the office. Other issues, of course, if there is a uh, if there is a phone line issue. You know, it's typically a physical issue and it requires, uh, you know, the, the phone, phone line provider to, uh, to roll a truck out and send a technician to fix that. And, and there's not much you can do about it until, until they come and fix it. Um, and, and then, and of course, 
being a, a physical piece of equipment, the PBX, you do need to install it in, you know, an office or a warehouse and, and have phone lines run throughout the building in order for them to function. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Carry on there, Bob. Next check, next uh, slide. So, so cloud hosted systems. So, you know, we've seen uh, VoIP systems, uh, voice over IP. We've seen these start to uh, start to gain in popularity, you know, maybe in the last 10 years. Um, there are there are definitely some benefits to them. Um, typically, there's not uh, there's not as much of an upfront uh, cost as far as buying a you know a, a PBX system. You still do typically have to buy IP phones, and they can be expensive. Um, and then there's you know some installation fees, and, and of course you still have to pay for your lines. So um, so the, the the benefits though are are great, and and that uh, you know you've you've got a lot more flexibility. Um, the systems can typically be administered using a, a web portal, so you don't necessarily need to uh, rely on an, on an IT or, or a telephone company to kind of make changes for you. If, you've, if you want to move an extension to another office, you could either potentially just pick up the phone and walk it over there and plug it in, or, or you make those changes in the web interface yourself without having to have a technician, again, drive to your office and reprogram the extension, right? which is with some of the Nortels and whatnot that, that have to, that, that still has to take place with, with some clients. <clears throat> um, you know, and then the benefits of course is, it's, it's easy to scale up or down if you, if you wanna add more capacity, more lines, more extensions, it's, it's really easy to do. You won't run out, of, you won't run into limitations. You know, if you have a physical PBX system, maybe that system is designed and it comes with, you know, it supports eight lines and 16 extensions and suddenly you need a ninth line or you need a 16th extension and, or 17th, um, it's not possible, right? Or, or maybe you have to pay for an expensive upgrade. Um, other, uh, some of the features, you know, many of the features that aren't available on legacy, they're available in almost all hosted PBX systems nowadays. So certainly voicemail with notification to, to email. Um, you have uh, cell phone apps where you can uh, potentially, you know, answer these calls using an app on your cell phone. You have cell phone pairing. So Again, if you have a desktop phone in your office, you could pair it to your cell phone. So if you if you get up and walk away from your desk, your calls could ring at your desktop phone as and on your cell phone simultaneously. So you know lots of lots of those types of features, um, good reporting, uh, and and often long distance calling to North America is including in, is included in many of the uh, the cloud hosting packages. Uh, some of the challenges that we see with um, with cloud hosted systems is the is you know some of the vendors selling these products uh, don't don't really um, perform a comprehensive review with the client and so so you know they will they will sell these these cloud systems into a company and and they'll they'll not um, they'll not really pay attention to that business's internet service and whether it's capable or adequate to support the 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 data needs of that organization as well as the voice needs. Uh, they'll often, um, you know, they kind of, you know, rely on the IT vendor to solve their problems as far as uh, choppy calls and calls being dropped and and uh, and challenges with some some firewalls that uh, some you know some firewalls are more friendly to, to VoIP calling than others. Uh, and then of course, um, w when you start putting IP phones in at at uh, business premises, they need Ethernet cable runs as opposed to the old legacy systems, they would use um, a different kind of cable. We just, we just call it category three cable, but, but the cabling for say a Nortel phone is, uh, is, is not capable of running an IP phone, a modern IP phone. So, so what ends up happening is you, you kind of steal the ethernet run from say the desktop computer, and then you daisy chain the computer off of the phone. And uh, th that's okay, we're, we're, not, we're not necessarily opposed to that. Uh, ideally, it's it's a perfect scenario when you've got a separate Ethernet run to the phone versus a separate run to the computer. That's perfect, and uh, but it's not always um, practical or affordable if you've got existing office space. Maybe if you're moving, it's easy to do then. Uh, but one of the challenges we see with a lot of these um, these cloud uh, vendors is uh, they don't pay any attention to cabling and. Uh, they don't, they don't worry about daisy chaining computers off of their phones. And we see them often selling inexpensive phones that uh, only run at hundred megabits per second. And so 
those 100 megabit phone is is absolutely more than adequate for a, a voice call. You know, mo most voice calls are using about one megabit of bandwidth uh, for a call or less. So, so that's not a problem. But then if you daisy chain your computer off of a 100 megabit phone, you're now limiting your computer to only 100 megabits of ethernet connectivity versus one gigabit that uh, you know, typically now is, is standard in a computer or a laptop. So, so you know, we see, um, we see these phones becoming uh, bottlenecks and, you know, causing uh, network performance issues when, uh, when customers switch over, you know, a bunch of their computers to daisy chain off of 100 megabit phones. So, so that's, uh, that's a big concern of ours. Okay. Um, so there is a, a third type of phone system that, that we, um, we came across a few years ago. Um, it's developed by a company out of uh, Cambridge, Ontario uh, called Fibernetics, and the system itself is, uh, is called Newt. Um, one, of the, um, one of the features, one of the main reasons that we like this phone system is uh, we, refer, we refer to it as a hybrid. Um, they use a combination of cloud services and on-premise. So on premise, they'll use some uh, smart switches to uh, control the phones and control the voice traffic and the quality of the calls. Uh, on, and then on premise, they will also, um, they will bring in their own, uh, what they call a VNA, so voice uh, network access circuit. It's, it's really just a, a scaled down DSL circuit, but it's dedicated to voice only, and it does not support any data traffic and it routes directly to Fibernetics, who is who is a carrier, um, and so um, and so your voice traffic is isolated and separated from your data traffic. So as a, as an IT person, that feature I just I love that feature um, because that by doing that 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 just almost immediately eliminates any call quality issues. All right, and then the fact that we're dealing with Fibernetics, you know, they're the manufacturer and they're the the carrier. Again, it's, it's, it just causes a lot less um, finger pointing and a lot less challenges when it comes to troubleshooting. You know, we were able to reach out to them and, and they usually, you know, if there is an issue, they can resolve it pretty quickly. Okay. Um, the, uh, Bob, next slide. Did you have anything to add to that? Well, I was just going to say, you know, um, my takeaway here from the three different types is certainly the, uh, with the legacy phone, you really don't have any user management. You're always having to call an outside IT company or phone company to help you with things. Whereas the, the hybrid or cloud systems, there's a little bit more manageability uh, there for the customer. And uh, yeah, so I'll move on to the next slide here. Just uh, talk a little bit about the new system. Sure. So, so yeah, Newt, uh, as I was saying, it is manufactured by Fibernetics, uh, who's in Cambridge, Ontario. And so, so Fibernetics is a Canadian carrier who is, uh, you know, managed and monitored by the CRTC. And essentially, you know, they have all the same responsibilities, you know, rights and privileges as, you know, Bell, Bell, Rogers, or Telus. So um, they're not maybe quite as well known, but they are nationwide. They have, uh, they have locations across Canada and they provide uh, their new business phone system. They also provide, you know, internet services, and they also they they provide residential, um, you know, home uh, phone service as well. So, so, um, so with the the new phone system, uh, again, the, the way the system works is we put some smart switches in at your office. We put a little uh, a little um, appliance, a little tiny appliance that that kind of provides you with some local connectivity amongst your office. So, so if you were to you know, lose internet access, then uh, internally your phones would still work amongst your staff. And, uh, and then if any, if somebody was calling you from outside of the, the building, outside of the business, and your business had lost internet access, the, you put your, your voicemail and your auto attendance are still fully functional because they are in the cloud hosted by Fibernetics. Um, and then again, what we typically do is um, we will typically associate users extensions with their cell members. And, uh, and so again, if you had no internet access or even no power in your building, if, um, or you're working from home, if somebody dials your extension, uh, it, we would typically have a program to either ring simultaneously at your office with your cell phone, or we maybe have it ring at your office first. And then if you don't answer that, then it would ring over to your cell phone. Uh, so, so it's a really nice um, feature and, uh, and even if there is a, a technology problem, be it power or internet, uh, you're pretty much still fully functional, um, regardless of where you're located, whether you're at the building or, or offsite. Okay. 
Um, the uh, and again, the the traffic that routes to them goes over from your building over the the circuit they install and uh, and connects to their their cloud privately without going over the internet. Okay, uh, they. Um, they use, uh, they support a couple of different brands of phones, Grandstream and Polycom, which are both uh, very popular branded IP phones. And again, we can provide expensive ones and cheap ones, conference phones, uh, simple phones, reception phones, uh, overhead paging, you know, all, you know, full, full functionality uh, that you can, uh, that you've, you know, everybody's used to with their legacy systems, they can, uh, they can get with the new system. Okay. Some of the, um, you know, some of the, the features that, uh, that they include would be obviously voicemail. They, they give you a uh, voice, voicemail to email notification with an attachment. There is a, um, a, a browser based um, application that they provide that lets users manage their extension and settings as well as their, you manage your desktop phone with that app. Uh, they do have additional apps you can install if you want to actually use your computer as your phone and there's an app for smartphones uh, that run on um, iPhones and Android. <clears throat> so again, they've there's some of the features, you know, find me, follow me. As I said, you can have it ring. You can have a rule that say, you know, ring me first on my uh, on my office phone. Then next, if I don't answer, then ring my assistant. If she doesn't answer, then ring my cell phone or whatever order you want it to go in. Um, you could have it ring simultaneously with your extension and your assistance if you want it. And then you have someone else you know, managing your extension if, if, that's, uh, if that's of interest. Uh, automated attendance are available. Um, the desktop call management I talked about, lots of detailed reporting. We can also control uh, long distance usage and, and that we can require users to uh, you know, enter a long distance code before they place any long distance calls. And that way we're able to, uh, to clearly um, you know, assign or track uh, long distance calling per user. Uh, call parking, uh, pickup paging, and then even uh, cloud conference bridging. So, so Newt supports uh, a, call, a cloud conferencing service that they bundle in with their phone system. So if you are using a third party service offered by you know, Bell or Rogers or, or another one of these, these companies, uh, you'd definitely be able to cancel that and use the call conferencing service included in, in, in Newt. And I guess, yeah, <clears throat> the base uh, model comes uh, with 80 features automatically out of the 90 features available. And I know one of the options there is a, a fax to email, because I know I like that. I mean, some people still use faxes out there these days, but uh, nice to have that feature where they'll convert it for you uh, to an email. True, yeah, yeah. Newt has uh, the ability to do inbound fax conversion. Um, and uh, if, if, if you need outbound faxing, we, uh, we do have another third party service that can offer that as well. So, so now with, with Newt, just to, um, just to clarify on the, the phone lines themselves, you know, when you, when you sign up for Newt system, part of the process is that, that you would migrate your phone lines from the carrier that you're currently using. So if you're using, you know, Bell or Rogers or Telus, or again, there's others. <clears throat> so, so part of the savings here and the functionality comes from transferring those lines over to be managed uh, by Newt and, uh, and then they control the lines. Uh, and so there's a lot more functionality with them. There's usually a cost savings of, uh, on the monthly fees of moving them over. And then Newt has really two variations of their product. Um, they have one version that is the hybrid that I've talked about where you put the switches in and the little appliance that would typically apply to you know, bigger organizations that have a bigger office space. And then they do have another version that's 100% um, that's cloud where everything is more in the cloud. They, you still need switches locally to you know, run your physical telephones and things like that. But, um, but they, uh, they, they have that service where they don't use the, the dedicated line with them they just manage your, your uh, calls over your internet circuits. So again, if, if we go that route, we always wanna do some, some testing and some research to make sure that the internet circuit is adequate and the firewall you know, for the voice and the data of the client. But because Nude is a carrier, I've found that we've had uh, better success with them when we use the cloud offering versus some of the other cloud providers um, where they're not a carrier, they're just simply a, a hosting partner that's selling um, phone system services. So, so um, yeah. And that's where you get the finger pointing. Oh, it's not us, you gotta call Bell, it's Bell. Yeah, so, sometimes. yeah, 
Yeah. Well, okay. it's usually the IT guy they're pointing the finger at. Well, that yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, at least, at least in this case, uh, with Fibernetics, it's a one-stop shop. So yep. any issues you have with your phone system, whether it be the phone lines, uh, whatever, and the system itself, you got one place to call. And, and of course, BSC is there to, to help you as well. Sure. So I guess we'll move on here and I, uh, to the next one, Microsoft Teams as a phone system. Sure. So, so you know, a lot of um, a lot of organizations uh, got on board with Teams in the past year. You know, due to the the pandemic and staff working from home, uh, Microsoft um, already had Teams bundled in with many of their subscriptions, and uh, they even they did make Teams available for free for a period of time if if people didn't have it yet. And I'll, I'll give them credit; they've really put a lot of effort and resources into developing the Teams application. Um, you know, we're using, um, we're using Zoom today to do this webinar, uh, and, and this, will, this will be our last Zoom webinar. So, um, so Teams uh, has now developed their webinar um, capabilities, and we'll be adding it on shortly. And so as soon as the, we've got the Teams webinar capability, BSC will, will start using that service rather than, than Zoom. You know, we currently have to pay Zoom for a subscription. You know, we're already paying for, for Teams as part of our Office 365 subscription. You know, why pay another subscription? So, so you know, they've really spent a lot of effort uh, developing the app. And one of the areas that they've been developing for some time, not, not just since the pandemic, is their, their voice and phone system capabilities. So, so Teams has a, an add-on feature that they call business voice. Um, what, I, what I would say, so it, it integrates you know, the business voice integrates with Teams, and uh, I'll show you that in a second. It's just, it's another tab that gets added to your sidebar called Calls. Uh, there, there's not, there's very little upfront cost. So this would be, you know, along the same lines as, as switching to like a pure um, cloud-based provider where your most of your costs are based based really around your, uh, your phones, your devices that you might have to purchase. Um, the one thing, you know, there's a couple of caveats though that I would say with Teams is we would, we would probably say at this point it's really suitable more for organizations that consider themselves to be fairly tech savvy. Um, and one of the reasons is that it's really designed to use your computer, your, your Windows computer, your Mac or your smartphone as your voice phone. And so using an application on there. Um, not, not all staff will be comfortable with that. Um, and then the other, um, the other, I don't say issue, but the other challenge with Teams is it's not really designed to use the old-fashioned extensions. It, it, uh, it's designed where essentially every user gets uh, their own direct telephone number. So, so again, we can, we can manipulate the auto attendant to, to um, pretend to have extensions. But really, Teams does not work with you know around extensions. It works with everybody having a direct phone number. So again, in, in the auto attendant, we could we could somehow come up with some choices where we fake it out and say you know if you want extension 201, you know you know push 201, and we could then have a routing rule that makes it dial that phone number, right? But it's it's not really using extension. So right. so again, with anybody moving to Teams, you, you kind of have to be receptive to thinking about maybe some new ways of doing things. Um, Teams does indeed support um, physical telephones on your desktop. Uh, however, it's, it's generally recommended that, that, that they're kind of used in just appropriate situations. So, you know, boardrooms, lobby phones, kitchen phone, maybe the receptionist, maybe you get him or her a, uh, you know, a, a phone that's, that displays, a, you know, uh, some extra settings, right? Um, I mean, Conference you could... Phone. A conference phone in a boardroom, absolutely. Um, you, you could also, um, you know, you could have some staff, you know, that that maybe um, you did make the decision that that they're best suited to have a desktop phone. So maybe, you know, so maybe for certain people, you get them a desktop phone, and and maybe then for the bulk of the staff, you you know, they're going to be comfortable with maybe using using their laptop or using their iPad or or their smartphone client as their phone. And then of course with those. With any of those devices, you would uh, we would typically you know recommend you know some sort of a headset. I mean, I'm I'm using today a wired headset. Uh, there are lots of um, Bluetooth wireless headsets uh, that are compatible with devices. So whether that's with your mobile phone 
or with a desktop computer even or a laptop computer you know we can get mobile uh, headsets you know and and, uh, and whatnot to make it easier for people to use those right <clears throat> you know so the way that you would um you would subscribe to uh to business voice is you you do require a an office 365 subscription for their other services already and then business voice is an add-on now most most organizations nowadays have moved to office 365 and likely do have a qualifying subscription so i mean i'll just quickly rhyme off uh, the common ones here so you know you've got um you know office 365 business basic standard premium uh enterprise you know e1 or e3 and then you've got your nonprofit uh, business basic, nonprofit business standard, and nonprofit E1 or E3. So I think those subscriptions cover off the overwhelming majority of uh, subscriptions that most businesses or organizations would have. And then you would need to add on to that the business voice subscription. Um, it's, it's typically $25 a month Canadian per user, uh, which is in line with other cloud hosting services. Um, uh, for charities, uh, there is a, uh, a deep discount, about 75% discount off of that um, to, uh, to make it more affordable. Uh, and then, and again, with that monthly fee, um, you're not paying for phone lines anymore. You, you know, you pay, a, you pay a phone, you pay a fee per extension or per, per user, not extension, <laughs> per user. Um, and then um, your phone lines get ported over to Microsoft so there is, you know, your monthly phone bill you currently pay, say, to Bell Canada, you know, that monthly phone bill goes to zero, but then you have this $25 a month fee per, per user, okay? And there is an additional fee if you wish to purchase what they call communication credits for um, toll-free inbound calling. So if you have a toll-free number that you publish, you need to purchase credits in order to pay for those long-distance calls that get dialed in. And again, the communication credits would be in use for international call dialing. So if you're dialing outside of North America, uh, the business voice add-on includes, I believe, 3,000 minutes a month uh, for uh, per, per user for long distance in North America, and then that gets aggregated. So, so again, if you've got 10 users, that's 30,000 minutes per month. So, so it's it's highly unlikely you're going to incur any any uh, North American long distance charges. But uh, if you're doing you know international or toll free, you do need to buy the conference credit. And the way that works is you really, you are just simply purchasing a little a little block of, of long distance usage in advance. And then it just simply gets used as the, those calls gets used up. So we just need to calculate an appropriate usage for, for each organization. Um, some of the features that uh, teams would include, um, typical, typical features, cloud voicemail. So, so with teams, you know, you do require internet access in order for you to connect to it and to function. So if you've, if your business has no power or if you've lost internet access, you're gonna have a problem with your laptop or your desktop. However, uh, just about everybody nowadays has a cell phone. And of course, Teams has a mobile a client for iPhones, iPads, Android devices, you know, Windows and Mac devices. So again, if you've lost power or lost internet in, in your office and you're, you're in your office, you're probably at home now, but if you're in your office uh, and you've got Teams installed on your mobile phone and your mobile phone is then, you know, I assume is still, you know, going to have internet access via your, your cellular data plan, uh, your Teams would still be fully functional. Okay. Um, you can program in uh, forwarding in, into Teams as a forwarding rule if you want to to forward to a cell number. So again, you can have a rule in there that it will ring you on your Teams applications, but if for whatever reason you don't answer one of your devices with Teams on it, you can then have it forward to a cellular number, right? So, so it'll dial your cell number as, as opposed to sort of, you know, ringing you on the app on your cell, right? So that's, that's an option. Um, and then it's got again all the all the standard features and options. It's got music on hold. It's called forwarding, simultaneous ring. So again, it can ring on multiple devices at the same time if you get up and walk away from your desk. Call parking. So again, if someone else in your organization has answered a call, they can message you and say, "Hey, I parked a call for you. Please pick it up." And then you can go and retrieve that call as opposed to them 
transferring you the call and maybe you don't answer it. Uh, you can easily switch from devices. So this is, this is a cool feature. So maybe you've answered a call on your cell phone through Teams, but then you, you wander back into your office and sit at your desk. You can then transfer that call to your laptop computer and take it over there. You can have dis distinctive rings for different people or phone numbers and have different behavior based on that ring. You can either you know, have it forward to someone else or go to voicemail, or, you know, whatever you like to do with it. Uh, you can block calls. Um, so lots of, lots of popular um, features are, are available with Teams. Uh, it even includes, includes call queuing. So again, if you're running a, a small call center, um, it comes bundled with that capability built into it. And, uh, and again, can do auto attendance uh, to, uh, to you know, direct people to, to where they want to be routed when they phone into the system. Okay. Um, I'm just uh, looking at my, my list of, uh, of other features and capabilities here. I think I've uh, covered them mostly. Uh, you can transfer a call and do a consultative transfer. So again, most phone systems will support that where you can dial your, your coworker and you can either do a, a what's what we would refer to as a blind transfer or a supervised transfer. So a blind transfer, I mean, you, you just pick somebody's extension and you say forward and you're done with the call. It either gets answered or it doesn't. You have no control over it. If you do a supervised transfer, you you know you can you can uh, you know dial that extension and say, hey hey Mary, I've got Joe on the call for you. I'm glad you picked up. I'm going to transfer him to you now. And then and then you're ensuring that the call gets retrieved and gets picked up. Okay. okay. Um, caller ID, of course, can be controlled uh, with teams uh, on an individual or organization-wide basis. Okay. And then, of course, with teams, we can, um, they have what they call presence call-based routing. So, you know, teams already has this capability where, you know, we, if you're using teams, you may have noticed when, when you go to chat with somebody or, or connect with them, teams will show you a color you know, with a little circle beside them, whether it's, you know, it's usually red, green, or yellow. And, uh, and so the red is, you know, they're busy. The, the green is they're available. And the yellow is that they're using their computer, but they haven't done anything in the last five minutes. So they're away from their desk. Okay. So, so those are, um, those are, you know, features that you can identify with teams and then know whether or not to route to someone or not based on their status. Okay. Um, and go on and on. There's lots of features, busy on busy. So again, if you're trying to reach someone and they're busy, uh, you can, you know, sort of hit a button and then when they get off the phone and they're no longer busy, your, your teams will automatically dial and connect you to them. Okay. All right. Um, so, so again, um, just to wrap up on teams, it's, it's a, it's a nice product. It's not for everybody, uh, you know, again, so I, I'm, I, I like it, uh, but I, I just, I would not want to sell it to an organization that wasn't ready for it, okay? So, so you need to be ready to accept kind of a new method of dealing with, with your phones. Um, uh, the quality is very good. The, you know, they, Microsoft's doing a really good job of, of managing call quality. And, and then again, you also get the video conferencing that, that's all built in with Teams as well. So, um, <coughs> quick Bob, question, uh, yeah, just a quick question, Bill, uh, inbound faxes, um, I guess there'd be a third party software that they'd use for, for that. Yeah. I don't think at this point, I'm not aware of Microsoft having any sort of a faxing service, but we have, again, we have a third party solution that, uh, that we work with that, um, can do inbound and outbound electronic faxing. Perfect. Perfect. I mean, there are still people that use fax out there, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah, there are. There are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I guess we'll move on and uh, we'll get to the demo portion. Sure. So I'll, I'll just take a few minutes and um, and I'm going to share my screen here and I will share that monitor. Can you see my screen there, Bob? I can. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to show first is the um, the Newt um, web console for the uh, user extension. So. So essentially every, every employee, like every user would have this tab available to them. Uh, they would also have <clears throat> the extension tab available to them, but it would only be to manage their extension. All of these other tabs are available to me uh, because I'm an administrator. So I'm able to administer changes within the phone system. Most of your staff, of course, are not gonna be administrators. So they would have the first two tabs. So in the console here, this is essentially used to manage um, their voicemail and manage their desktop phone. So this would be more for people who either have a phone in the office on the desktop 
or maybe they've got a phone at their uh, at their home and they, they're using a, a remote phone, like, but I'm talking about a physical phone still on the desk there. So I can see here that Jeremy and Vince are both on the phone here, just based on the black uh, little triangle. If I wanted to call Bob, I just hover over him and click on the, the call extension and, and away I go, I would call him. If I wanted to dial a phone number, I mean, I can, I can peck away here at the numbers. I mean, that, that's, that's not, uh, you know, it's time consuming. I can also just click here and I can just type now. Okay, and, and then it'll dial the number that I've typed in there using my keypad. I could also um, uh, copy and paste into here. So, you know, so maybe you're pulling a number from a website or from somewhere else where you have that number electronically, you could just grab that number and paste it in here. And then once the, once the number is, uh, is here, the, the menu items change and you're, you can then hit, hit dial and, uh, and away you go, your desktop phone is gonna ring, okay? Once you're in the call then, you can hang up with the hang up button here. The call would, right, the call, the call would appear in the screen here and then you get some different options that, uh, that are given to you, such as you could park the call, you could forward it, you can disconnect it, you can put it on hold, right? So, so again, this is a nice, nice application for sort of controlling your calls in conjunction with your desktop phone, all right? If somebody told you there was a parked call for you, you can click on the parked call tab here and parked calls would appear here and then you would just click on it and answer it. Uh, this would be to, uh, to work in the conference bridges. So right now there's no conferences going on. You've got uh, your call history so you could choose your date range and, and see what's going on. So I haven't had any calls today. Um, you can look at your, um, your contact list. So I, I've just added in one personal contact here but you can kind of build your own your own contact list. You can add, the, you know, add a tab here and add people in that you, uh, that you dial regularly, okay? You've got your voicemail button. So again, here you would see when you've got some voicemails listed, you just double click on this to listen to your voicemail. You can edit this and then highlight them and delete them. And then in my case, because I'm a, I'm a queue manager, I can take a quick look at the queue. I can see we currently have four people in our queue. Three are available in green. Uh, the one in yellow is not. So again, Newt uh, also has, um, you know, call center capability and queuing available too. Okay, so so this is to again manage your your desktop phone and some of your settings like retrieving voicemail and whatnot. If you look at extensions, this is going to show you sort of you know my extension settings. So you know most users don't do this on their own, but some are capable. And uh, and again, you know we're happy to assist with this configuration or to train somebody in your organization to do this, right? So, so in my case, I'm kind of ringing my desktop phone and at the same time, I'm ringing my soft phone. If I don't answer those, then I tell it to ring my application on my smartphone. And if I don't answer all of that, then, and then it takes a voicemail for me and I can control how many rings I send it to on those different devices. So, so basically I'm sort of doing a combination here of simultaneous ring and follow me calling and then voicemail. So it's, it's uh, there's, there's a lot I've got going on there, all right, for, for my calling, right? And then I, I won't go into too much here of the, uh, <clears throat> of the um, administration, but uh, we've got a toll free number. And so we kind of set how it behaves. Um, and then we've got our uh, main line with our auto attendant and our after hours line auto attendant. So, so again, you know, we choose, um, you choose how it behaves. You know, if you push certain buttons, where does it route to? And we set it. And we identify different holidays, so they're already they're already pre-programmed. <clears throat> so, um, so again, as those holidays come up for the year, I don't have to go and do anything manual. I've already kind of set it once at the beginning of the year. And if people call in on those holidays, then um, they'll, you know they'll hear a greeting. You know that we're not open for the day, and, and we'll kind of play our uh, our after hours um, auto attendant to them. Okay. And I guess there's some management uh, sort of behind the scenes where you can go in and look at, uh, you know, who is calling who and um, yeah, which, sure. I mean, know, there's, amongst there's your the, staff. Sure, there's the detailed call reporting. So again, we can uh, we can see some, uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of uh, details here around uh, the calls. Uh, you can pick your date range. This can be exported to a uh, to an Excel spreadsheet where you can do an additional some additional manipulation of it. Okay, so. So, um, so again, we could uh, also do extension summary. 
we want to see what's going on with uh, extension calling. So there you go. This is just our own staff calling each other and, and their talk and time, right? So, so there is lots of details there uh, available. Okay. Great. Uh, I'm going to um, quickly then just flip over to Teams. Um, I think probably everybody on the call likely uses Teams somewhat themselves, I hope. And uh, so we have our own, uh, our own Teams uh, application here. Um, we've got, uh, it's, it's pulled in um, automatically. It's linked to my Outlook. So it's pulled in all my contacts from Outlook. Uh, he's, these are just some of my, you know, favorite or, or common uh, contacts. We've got my coworkers and my mom. <clears throat> so, and, uh, and I see I'm in your, your favorite list too. Thanks, thank you, Bill. Your number one, Bob. There we go. <clears throat> so, so if I wanted to dial Bob via telephone, you know, I can, I can hit the call contact and it's going to dial him by a phone. I mean, I could call conference with him. Um, you know, in this case, on this, I'm on my remote computer at the office, so there, there's no camera on that computer, right? So, so, um, so this is a, a quick way, and, and I can again, I talked about people's statuses, so I can see their statuses. Um, you know, they're kind of in my my realm, so they're shared with me. Um, <clears throat> just so everybody's aware, in, in Teams, you do have the ability under settings where you can control, you know, who can see your status, right? So. So by default, it's not only displayed internally, it's also displayed externally. So, so you may or may not want people to know your status outside of your organization, that's up to you. And you would modify that through your team settings. Okay. If I wanted to, um, you know, this is my speed dial button here. If I wanted to make a phone call, again, I can, I can just uh, come to this, uh, this, this line here and, and just uh, type in the number I want to uh, phone and, and hit call. I could, um, again, I could, uh, I could uh, use my, my mouse and I, I could, you know, peck away at, at the keyboard here. It's, it's a lot slower than, you know, just clicking up here and just, just typing. I could, again, I could paste into here if I had copied the number from somewhere. Maybe I've been surfing on the web and I see some number I want to call uh, chapters or something or, you know, staples. I can copy and paste their phone number, plunk it in here, and it'll die. Okay. Again, the, the contacts list is going to show me everybody out of my, uh, out of my Outlook that has uh that is i want to say synchronized but i don't know if they even use the word synchronized integrated <laughs> with um with um with teams okay i've got my call history here so again i can look up and see um you know all the people that i've been communicating with uh, and then i've got my voicemail so if someone leaves me a voicemail um this is where i would go to retrieve it and the voicemail would be listed there uh, and then, you know, again, when someone leaves you a voicemail, not only will you get the voicemail attached as an audio file, uh, Microsoft will send you a transcript of it. So they will, they will um, trans translate it or transcribe it and, and include the text of that message in the body of the email that you get. Okay. If we take a quick peek up at my settings, um, we'll go and take a look at calls. So again, here's some of your call answering rules. So I mean, my rule is fairly simple. Um, when people call me, um, it'll uh, it forwards to my cell phone um, and uh, and no one else. Uh, and then um, and then it can also I can have it ring to other people. I can also ring on a different device or a group or my cell number. So th there's a number of different options you can do to control um, what to do. So I'm going to change this. I had it set to forward my calls to voicemail. I'm going to have that. So, so the calls ring me. And if I don't answer, they go to voicemail and ring for this many seconds before we register. So it's going to ring my phone, my, or not my phone, it's going to ring my Teams applications that I have open for 20 seconds. And then if I don't answer, go to voicemail. Okay. I can configure my voicemail here and uh, record my own greeting. Here's your uh, text language. This is the language I'm using. They've got a whole bunch of different languages that you can choose from. And again, I can set an out of office greeting. So you know, maybe I'm on vacation and I, you know, so I want to tell people I'm not going to be in the office till next Monday or something like that. I could specify that as to when I want to set that. Okay. Um, and then again, some more ringtones and what you want it to do, you know, if, you know, what you want it to uh, choose a specific wing ringtone. And then again, what you want it to do when you, when someone forwards a call or delegates a call. Okay. So, so lots of options there. And I'm only showing you the options that are, available to you as an end user. So, so um, uh, 
as an administrator, of course, uh, BSC would have many more options on the back end that we could set on behalf of your organization. All right, so okay. um, that's that's really my my um, my run through of uh, of the two two kind of phone systems that we're currently promoting, um, and uh, I'm just wondering if there's any questions. Yeah, um, well, I do have a, a couple here, Bill. Um, uh, can I use an existing phone with Teams? I guess if, if they have their own phone system, uh, will it work with Teams or, or Newt for that matter? Not typically. So, and, and you know, that's, that's, that applies to just about any hosted phone system or IP phone system. They usually support um, uh, certain models or brands of phones. So yeah, in the case of Newt, they support Grandstream and Polycom. And in the case of Teams, um, they support a number of different brands, but they need to specifically be phones that um, that integrate with Teams. Okay, okay. Uh, another question here. If the power goes out or the internet goes out, will I still receive calls? Will it route to my cell phone? Uh, yeah, so so again, if, if uh, with, with both of them, it's, uh, it's possible to do that. Uh, with, you just have to set up um, either a call routing rules where they are set to either follow you and, and call your extensions in a certain order, or, uh, or, or if you've got it already set to ring simultaneously, it'll, it'll ring to your cell phone uh, and it just won't be able to reach your desktop phone. Okay, uh, I don't think we have any other questions. If there, anybody has any other questions, now's the, now's the time to, to ask. Sure, you can just put your hand up. We can unmute you if you want, if you have anything. Yep. Yep. Not sure if I have the, the hand feature enabled there, but oh, certainly yeah. on the Q and A for the chat, you can uh, sure just uh, click anything in there. Yeah. Um, but certainly, if the, if there isn't any questions, you know we're we're here to to help you uh, make your decision. If you are in in looking for a new phone system, we we are certainly here to help you decide which one is best for you. And and I think the smaller companies, you know, anywhere from five to ten users, maybe. Maybe the you know the, the cloud-based newt might be more for you, but I mean Teams is still still an option. But uh, and then if you have a lot of users, you know maybe you're up to 50, 80. Uh, the the newt hybrid system would be a good option, and of course Teams as well. But uh, we can certainly help you make that decision. All you got to do is, is send us a, a little note to our our contact there. We have a contact page at BSC. Uh, sg.com there um, where you can actually request a consultation too there and uh, we can we can help you uh, pick that phone system so i don't see any other questions here bill uh, anything else you want to add no just thanks for everyone for taking the time to uh, to attend yeah great thanks everyone and uh we'll uh, have a follow-up email sent to you with a recording of the webinar today and uh, some other resources for you to to check out as well so again thanks for attending and uh Stay safe and keep smiling. All right. Everybody have a great day. Okay. Thanks. All right. Take care.